Good morning and blessed Christmas. Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 45. Birth of Jesus foretold. Verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. And she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary visits Elizabeth. Verse 39. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I now like to pass the time to Pastor Robert. Okay, praise God for the reading of the scriptures. That reminds us of the birth of Jesus. And of course, there's also the other passage in Matthew 1, uh, which we did not read, but uh, I'll make reference to that. <clears throat> so, church and friends, blessed and joyous online Christmas. The first one in SMC. Yeah. So, blessed and joyous Christmas to all of you out there. Yeah, from my family and I as well. Right. Uh, we used to have it uh, in person and... Uh, but uh, for this year, it's online, and uh, and we are so glad that you are back again for today's Christmas service. Yeah. <clears throat> before we go on uh, to hear the word of God, let us uh, bow before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks, Lord, uh, this day that we can remember to the birth of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the scripture reading that reminds us of that and the visual portrayal, Lord, of your birth. We thank you, Lord, that uh, yeah, when the fullness of time came, you fulfilled the promise to the people. You sent a Lord Jesus, born of Virgin Mary, to come to be our Savior, a Redeemer, and our Lord, for which we praise you. So Father in heaven, we want to commit, Lord, uh, the preaching of your word, the hearing of your word, and also, Lord, in acting upon your word. And just pray, God, by the Holy Spirit, that you enable us, Lord, to be attentive and to be obedient with the word that you will give to us. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, um, in your Zoom app, there is a chat function. Most of us would know that at the right at the bottom there. I would like to uh, all of us to, if you can, 
uh, if your gadget allows you, your device allows you uh, to respond in a minute or less to this question. <clears throat> right? Ready? Here we go. The question has been screened out to us. It says, in one minute or less, tell us why faith is important to you. Right? So please do the needful. I will also have a look at the chat myself. Right? <clears throat> yes, we have the response there by Vincent. Michelle, thanks for your response. And we have Yuklin as well. Wow. Thank you, Sok Yen. Faith is a bridge to God. And Yuklin, Michelle, Vincent, quite similar thoughts. That without faith, we cannot please God. Right? Anyone else? You can just chat there, write the chat there, and we will continue with the sermon. Yeah. So thank you for sharing, um, friends. And some of us may also have our own thoughts as well. Why faith is important to us personally. You see, last week we heard Brother David Ong. For those of us who were uh, who were there last week. Uh, during the Christmas celebration, uh, we heard our brother David Ong shared his testimony. And by the way, the YouTube link of his testimony will be sent to our cell group leaders uh, and uh, also our SMC office today. Yeah, So you will get it from there. Yeah, Please go and check out with your cell group leaders and office. Now, after the worship service last week, I wrote to him, among other things I say to David, Hey, David, when you say, I don't need this anymore, he was referring to Benson and Hager's cigarette box and uh, also the matchbox. He said, I don't need this anymore. Uh, and he said this to a former gangster chief who became a missionary by the name of Ramalingam. And then my immediate thought of your action, I told him, was this. It is an act of faith for you to say that to Ramalingam. I don't need this anymore. You see, not knowing the outcome, yet David Ong had the confidence of the thing hoped for. Freedom from cigarette addiction, apart from his drug addiction that was ruining his life then. It is like not yet seen the flood, yet Noah built the ark. It is like not knowing where he was going, yet Abraham obeyed God's call. So faith matters. And this is a subject for this year's Christmas. Faith matters. Faith is like the head of the coin. I have a coin here. Right? It's like the head of the coin, while repentance is like the tail of the same coin. Pastor Chris, Chris Manimanan and Pastor Daniel Ho had both spoken about turning to God in repentance earlier in past weeks. What is necessary to salvation is repentance. And what is essential to salvation is faith. Repentance and faith are what Apostle Paul spoke about to the Ephesian church leaders or elders. And Paul said to them in Acts chapter 20, verse 21. In the next slide, we shall see that. Paul said, I have one message 
for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. So, uh, so two aspects are so important to salvation. What is necessary is repentance. And what is essential is having faith in our Lord Jesus. We will now look at faith and three Bible characters in our next section. Joseph, Mary, and the shepherds. Firstly, Joseph. The angel appeared to Joseph, and he was afraid. But his fear turned to faith. How did this happen? You know? Here's how. Joseph learned that Mary was pregnant. And Joseph was afraid. You know, some, a number of things came to his mind, you know. He was afraid. Not sure whether he was afraid of uh, what people might think of him or think of Mary and so on, right? But he was afraid. We know this by what the angel said to him in a dream. Matthew 1 verse 20 says this. The angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The angel spoke several other things, but this is the verse that I want to highlight to you. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel had received the word from the Lord to convey to Joseph. Now the word of the Lord is powerful. Joseph responded to the word of the Lord by obeying what the Lord had commanded. And the word of the Lord is able to transform a person's fear into faith. So friends and guests, is there anything that you may be afraid of? Afraid to step up in faith? To respond to God's command to be doing something for him? Like sharing? The good news with others? Afraid to step up in faith to obey God's call, perhaps into full time ministry? Has anyone been considering this and praying over this? Are you afraid that God will shortchange you if you step up in faith in response to God? Whatever fear anyone may have, let this Christmas be a time when fear be turned into faith. Faith, not in faith, but faith in God. And to be sure, it is not the size of faith that matters. It is the quality of faith that counts. A faith that truly believes that God exists. God is real, and God is able to do the impossible for you and I. And as the picture shows to us, faith, small as a mustard seed, taken from Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said this to his disciples, For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, and you know how how small the seed of a, uh, the, the, the mustard seed is. If you look at the picture, you can see, compared to the, the, the fingers, the thumb, and the finger. Jesus said, For truly I tell you, if you have the face the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here and to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Whatever the obstacles, God is able to do the impossible. Now, Joseph heard the word of the Lord just once, and his fear soon turned into faith. 
I want to show you in the next slide that faith is special. Faith is better than any other thing to God. This is what I would like us to take home for today. Faith is special, special to God. Faith is better than anything, anything to God. The second person we want to look at is Mary. Faith and Mary, that is, I mean. Mary also heard the angel spoke, angel Gabriel, and she was greatly troubled and like Joseph, even afraid. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Now, Mary had a question for the angel. How will this be since I'm a virgin? In asking this question, Mary neither disputed nor disbelieved the fact, the truth revealed to her. She just wondered about the manner of the fulfillment of what was foretold would happen to her. Mary didn't doubt. Mary just believed. She didn't seek a sign to see before believing. And this is very unlike Zechariah, who in unbelief and doubt desired a sign. And just like the Jews in his days, they were all looking for signs. And Zechariah was also one of them. In unbelief or doubt, Zechariah desired a sign for the birth of his son to his wife, Elizabeth. And Zechariah's words were words of doubt. And one of the Bible translations put it this way, the God's word translation. It says this, what proof is there for this? I am an old man and my wife is beyond her childbearing years. What proof is there for this? It's like, show me the evidence. Zechariah then became muted for a time. You see, friends and guests with us, to Mary, believing is seeing. To Zechariah, seeing is believing. And it was Augustine who said this. Faith is to believe what you do not see. The reward of this faith is to see what you believe. Take some moments to digest what Augustine said. You see, Mary believed the word that the angel brought to her. And she spoke words of simple, humble belief. What did she say? Luke chapter 1 verse 38 says, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And later when Elizabeth saw Mary, Elizabeth said this of Mary. In Luke chapter 1, verse 45. This was what Elizabeth said. You are blessed for believing that the Lord would keep his promise to you. I have added the emphasis by underlining the word believing. That's faith. Like Joseph, Mary heard the word of the Lord just once. And her fear soon turned into faith. I want to show you the slide again that I showed to you earlier. Faith is special. Faith is better than any other thing to God. We have heard about Joseph. We have heard about Mary. The third person, or rather a group of persons, we want to look at are the shepherds. 
and their faith. The shepherds were keeping watch over their flock by night. And when an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were filled with great fear. Maybe if you are there, present, you could see the fear in their eyes. Fear is real. Fear was present in all the three Bible characters we looked at. Joseph, Mary, the shepherds, during the time of Jesus' birth. And many people are troubled by fear today. Not only the fear of responding to God's command and call, but also all kinds of fear. I was once one of the most fearful boy alive. And I'm not exaggerating this to you. I experienced fear of the dark, fear of driving past the cemetery, fear of being asked to comb my diseased father's hair as a traditional Chinese custom, fear of ghosts or evil spirits. Thank God for his word that birth fear, a birth faith in me that overcame my, all my fears. Today, many people fear COVID-19 virus. If you drill down further and ask why, ultimately people fear death itself. People live each day in fear of dying without any assurance of salvation in Christ. And you see, by their actions, you know why people are so fearful of COVID-19 virus. Joseph, Mary, shepherds, they were all filled with fear. Only our fears are different. But just like Joseph and Mary, the shepherd's fear soon turned into, what's the word? Faith. And how did this happen? You see, when the shepherds heard the angel of the Lord concerning the good news of great joy for all the people, a Savior who is Christ the Lord was born. The shepherds said to one another, let's run away. No, 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 he didn't say that. They didn't say that. Look at the verse on the screen. They say, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They spoke words of faith. They even knew that the Lord has made known to them. They spoke words not of unbelief or doubt. Certain people are spreading words of fear and doubt. I pray that as lost people, we will not be among those who are spreading fear and doubt, especially in this season of COVID pandemic. The shepherd's words were words of confidence of the thing hoped for, the conviction of the thing not seen. Their faith in God's word changed them. Their faith stirred them into action. That's why they hurried to Bethlehem from where they were and they found the baby lying in a manger. They glorified and praised God. They believed, therefore they saw. They saw the baby in the manger. Jesus, just as the angel had told them. And so like Joseph and Mary, the shepherds heard the word of the Lord, the good news of great joy for all people concerning a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And it took the shepherds just one time, having heard the word of the Lord, to move from a position of fear to a position of faith. Faith in the Lord. And that's why their faith was special. And that's why their faith was better than any other thing that they could offer to God. 
I want to move on now to faith and us. Each one of us would have our unique stories. I'm sure of that. As for me, I remember the days of my youth. God sent not an angel, but a human being, right? God sent Sister Seward to bring the good news of salvation to me at a youth meeting. I heard that Jesus, I probably for the first time or so that I've heard this name Jesus, huh? I heard that Jesus came to forgive my sins. I never gave a second thought to sins, no? But that night I heard that Jesus came to forgive my sins. I heard about eternal life. That was something I never heard before as well. I heard about eternal life Jesus promised for the first time in my life. The Spirit of God stirred my heart as I heard the word of the Lord. And guess what? I was afraid. I was no different from Joseph, Mary, and the shepherds. Initially, when they heard the word of the Lord from the angels and they were afraid, I heard God's word brought to me by a human being, God's servant, and I was afraid. I was afraid to respond to the good news of salvation. Initially, at least, I was afraid of this, of what my best friends would think of me, that maybe I was going nuts, you know, by becoming a Christian. Or if I would choose that path to become a follower of Jesus. I hesitated for a while that night, but the altar call was made. But soon after, my fear turned to faith in Christ for salvation. I prayed the sinner's prayer. I received Christ into my life. And I experienced, just like what David Ong said last week, I experienced the same thing. A heavy burden was lifted up, lifted off my shoulder, as you are, <clears throat> out of my chest. And joy filled my heart that night. Joy was overflowing in my heart. I cannot describe to you the experience of that burden of sin lifted from my heart. And in replacement of that, joy filled my heart that night. Looking back, I now know the word faith that described my response to God's offer of salvation through Jesus Christ. You see, friends, our God wants us to know that to Him, our faith is special. To Him, faith is better than any other thing. To God, in God's sight, from God's perspective, faith is special to God. Faith matters to God. In the final section on faith and God, we will learn why this is so. Why does faith matter not only to us, but importantly to God? In the chat, you will find that a number of us have gotten the right answer. Because faith gains approval. Because faith pleases, pleases God to no ends. Faith matters to God simply because faith pleases God, period. And it is written in the Bible, the things that I've just spoken. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 says this, For by it, faith, our ancestors won or obtain God's approval. Hebrews 11 verse 2. God had, had testified how his people obtained his favor, his every spiritual blessing. By what? Faith. The Bible also says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, Now without faith, it is impossible to please God. Our brothers and sisters also wrote that in the chat function just now. The same answer. The opposite is equally true. 
Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But faith pleases God to no end. Faith is what God requires for salvation. And faith, faith alone pleases God. God is saying to us through his word this Christmas, and hear this carefully, our trust, our believing, our faith alone in a Savior who is Christ the Lord is what will gain God's approval, please God, and result in God's blessings. And this is what our Lord Jesus had testified to us also. From John chapter 20, verse 29, it says this. Jesus himself says this to Doubting Thomas. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You and I are included in those who have not seen and yet have believed. And you receive a blessing. You see the word there, blessed. Belief, trust, faith is our assurance of things hoped for. The confidence of things not seen. The blessing of eternal life. Indeed, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places that comes only through faith in a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And so, friends, if there is anyone present here this morning, if you feel afraid to commit your whole life to Jesus for whatever may be your reason, my reason was what will my best friends think of me, that perhaps I was going nuts, you know, if I were to make a decision to receive Christ into my life, that was my fear. If anyone present here online this morning, if you feel afraid to commit your whole life to Jesus for whatever your reason may be, your faith can turn, your fear, your fear rather can turn to faith. Come to Jesus, turn to God, humbly seek him for forgiveness of your sin. God will forgive your sins. God longs to forgive your sins. Believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Just tell him in your simple, in simple words. It's not complicated. But the prayer is so simple. You say, I believe in you, Lord Jesus, to take away my sins. As simple as that. And by faith, receive the blessing of his great salvation for you. Now, for those of us who have been blessed through our faith in Christ, Go and share with others like the shepherds. They were the first evangelists who told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child who is Jesus. Don't live in fear forever. Don't live in fear of sharing the good news. Don't live in fear in sharing what God has blessed you. Especially when God, when you have responded to God's promises, God's calling and leading, respond in faith, not in fear. And press on to live a faith-based life in Christ. Live by believing, not by seeing. Faith is the antithesis to sight. Faith is the opposite to sight. We live by faith, not by sight. This is how the people of God will gain God's approval and please God. And if you have been receiving God's blessing, spiritual blessings, and you know the reason why, because you have been living a life of faith. In God. God has shown us this. God has testified to this. It is written in 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. It says this. And this is his command that we may believe in the name of 
his son, Jesus Christ. It is not an option. It is not a suggestion. It is God's command that we respond in faith, that we may believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. Brothers and sisters in the Lord and friends, as we end the Christmas Day service, here's a final word for us. Remember that it is, remember, that is recall and pay attention to this. That's what the word remember means. Faith matters to God. Our God, our faith is special to God. And faith is better than any other thing to God in God's sight, from God's perspective. Let us pray. I just give an opportunity for all of us to pray. If you are here, guests for the first time, if you have not prayed that prayer before to receive Jesus into your life, this is a time for you just to pray. I will just lead you into prayer just as Sister Seward led me and his team led me to prayer. You just follow after me and I want to pray with you. Father in heaven, thank you for your word to me today. Thank you that I've understood that I've sinned against you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins and I want you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in you that you are able to take away my sins. I believe in you as my Savior and my Lord. You are the Christ. Thank you for the Holy Spirit in me. Amen. <clears throat> Father in heaven, I just pray, pray to Lord, for now, for those of us who have known you, I pray, O oh God, that we will move, Lord, from a position of fear to a position of faith. If there is among us, Lord, who are still fearful of so many things in life, Father, I just pray, Lord, that your word will resonate, Lord, within us deeply. And so that, Lord, we will no longer live in fear, especially, Lord, the slavery, uh, the bondage, uh, the whole lifelong bondage to the fear of death. I pray, Lord, that you will release us from this, give us the freedom Oh God, I just pray, God, that you strengthen us, our faith, that our faith may not waver in all the circumstances in life, whether in good times or challenging moments of our life, even now during the COVID pandemic. I want to pray that, Lord Jesus, that our faith in you will remain strong, will not waver, but grow from strength to strength unto the glory of God. And all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat>